We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, you are king and God not enthroned by any human being. You are self-existence. You have been before we came into being. Even before the world came into existence, you knew it that a time is going to come that we will experience what is happening now. That is why even the Lamb of God was slain even before the foundation of the world was laid. You have proposed all things in your heart according to your own will and purpose. We therefore pray that the, the provision of the blood of Jesus will be effective in all humans that are in this place. In the life of every human being here, let the blood of Jesus be efficacious. Amen. Let the power in the blood be experienced in our time. Amen. Let shame and disgrace be knocked out of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray that you teach us to make use of the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shout hallelujah. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we have the topic, the efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ. The efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, the word efficacy, don't be afraid of it, is very simple. The effectiveness, the usefulness, uh, it is the, the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. The power, it is powerful. Uh, it is effective. The blood of Jesus is powerful. And if you are a Christian and you know how to use the blood of Jesus very well, uh, in all battles of life, you will be victorious. Say amen. amen. The test is... Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12. Let me start from verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the Brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him, overcame Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Heaven was asked to rejoice. And we who belong to the heavenly kingdom of God, uh, that rejoicing by extension is ours also. Say amen. amen. But look at the next sentence. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and of the sea, for the devil is come down to you. If I say, personalize it, and say, the devil is come down to me, uh, you may feel offended. But the scripture is saying that woe to all of us that are here now, and the inhabitants 
of the sea, those dwelling on earth, everything on earth, whether you are directly being addressed or indirectly, but the earth, it is said of it, woe to you, inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Why? Why? For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Uh, is there anybody in this house that Satan has never attacked before? Satan has never attacked you all the days of your life since you were born. There had been no attack, no negative things from Satan, no arrow thrown at you any day. Is there anybody in this house? So do you see that the word of God is very true? When the Bible says, woe to you, you inhabitants of the earth. Why? Because the troubler of heaven had come down to you. And he is not here to just do his normal, a normal business, but he is yes, he's here with anger. He is having a great wrath. He is angry. Why? Because he has lost it. The most beautiful being in heaven. The one that God created to be the light. Uh, the word Lucifer means light. He used to be the light. The one that used to cover the mount of God, the mountain of God. The, in him were musical instruments. He was built with precious stones, not with clay. And when he lost it because of his rebellion, uh, he, he was thrown down to the earth. And when he came, he vowed that he is going to be the problem of mankind. But look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Hebrews 9, 22. And almost all things by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. Do you know why I quickly jump, jump to this? It is because the power of Satan, the sting of death that Satan brought, that Satan brought is sin. But Jesus made a provision so that when Satan comes and moves as he walks up and down, to and fro, seeking for one to devour, as he comes to you and he sees that the blood of Jesus had been provided and you are making use of the provision, he becomes powerless. The Lamb of God had been slain even before the first stone of the world was laid. The first foundation stone was laid. God made preparation. Um, look at the passage we read in verse 4. Revelation 12, 4. And he stay drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Listen. When Satan was thrown down, he came with his entourage. He wasn't thrown down alone. He came with some wicked demons. He came with some wicked personalities. When God saw the level of beings that descended to the earth, he had to empower man. At first, man was to live innocently as if Satan wasn't even on earth. On what condition? That don't acquire the knowledge of, the, uh, the, the knowledge of good and evil. 
And so long as you carry my image, I will always have a fellowship with you. So long as you retain my nature, I will always have a fellowship with you. And it was so until man tampered with the covenant of God, broke the covenant, and Satan came in between man and God. But right there in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, there was a promise of the Savior that this same woman you deceive today, a seed is going to come out of this woman. And though you are going to bite his heel, you will strike his heel, he is going to bruise your head. That is the first promise of Jesus Christ. And when he came, he took the cup and he, gave it, he blessed it and gave it to the disciples. He said, this is my blood. Drink, drink this blood. A covenant. He said, take this blood and drink this blood. Drink it. You are not related to someone biologically except by what? By blood. Drink this blood. As you drink it, it's going to enter your veins, enter your marrow, enter your heart. And listen, let me show you something in the Bible. John, 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 John. Chapter 1, verse 12. John 1. Um, but as many as received him, to them he gave power. He gave what? Power to be what? To become the sons of God. To be the sons of God. That means before you can be a child of God, you need to be empowered. Apart from what happened on the day of Pentecost, the disciples were empowered. They became the body of Christ. They became one with Christ. Because even when Jesus was praying for them, in John chapter 17, that they may be one as we are one. Jesus did something physically. Now, when you have my blood inside of you, I will be in you and you will be in me. And when I am in you, the world that is in the world, that is roaring, prowling around like a roaring lion, when he sees you like a lamb and he tries to get close to you, he will see the lion in you. Who is the lion? The lion of the tribe of Judah. When my blood runs inside of you, you are empowered to be the sons of God. So it's not just about... Um, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. No, there has to be a connection. There, the Bible says that the foundation of God standeth sure. It stands sure. It is very sure. It has this seal that God knows those who are His. He knows them. And there is a warning that follows immediately. And let everyone that nameth the name of God, the name of the Lord, depart from evil. Because when you carry him in yourself, you must set yourself apart and stay away from evil if you must maintain him in you. Praise the Lord. Shout a better hallelujah. hallelujah. The blood of Jesus is powerful. The Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That means when the battle was ongoing. There was the need to deploy the arsenal of God, the most powerful tools of God. Did God go for the battle? Did God fight? Eh? God is the only man of war that does not need to go to the battle physically. He doesn't. He speaks a word and the angels of God run with the word. He speaks his word and his spirit moves with the word and accomplishes it. All he needs to do is sit and wash. He told Jeremiah, I am washing to see that my word 
comes to pass. Praise the Lord. And the word of God will never return to him the same way. It must accomplish the purpose for which he sends it. God has exalted his word above all things. God does not play with his word. He does not play with his word at all. Are you empowered by the blood of Jesus? Are you empowered by the blood? There is something that uh, medical personnel, uh, I may not be able to uh, explain in detail, but there is something they call cross-mashing. Yes, cross-mashing. When you bring the blood of the donor, you also need the blood of the recipient. And you cross-mash. You shed the blood. Apart from shaking blood groups, you also cross-mash to see if the antigens in this person's body are going to react negatively with this person's, the recipient's antigen. You cross-mash. And if you transfuse blood without doing proper cross-mashing, there could be a problem. There is a problem that could arise called agglutination. When the blood comes into you and your, bo your body soldiers fight anything that comes into your body. For instance, if ants bite you, eh? if you have a sting, you see that the place will be swollen. Immediately, what happens is that the body soldiers, they, you know, when you get a sting, a chemical is introduced into your body. Your body soldiers immediately will gather. They will come and gather around it and try to fight it. Push it. Don't enter the body. They shake it first. So when your body soldiers shake it and discover that um, it is okay, uh, everything flows. They welcome it. But if the blood is not in line, if it does not match your blood, and the doctor forces it and pushes the blood into you, there could be trouble. It leads to death. That is why when the Bible says that don't drink the blood of Jesus anyhow, examine yourself first before you drink. Because it has led to many being sick. And some of you have already asleep. It kills. The blood of Jesus kills. The blood kills. When you come before the Lord and you say, I want to be your son. I want to be your son. Without being born again. Without identifying with the sonship of Jesus Christ and the, 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 the fathership of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit without passing through the process of being born. If you come, you may not receive the blood. The blood may not be useful. But if you have prepared yourself like Cornelius, when Peter was told, go, meet Cornelius, when he got there, do you know the funny thing? They believe that before you can receive the Holy Spirit, you have to be baptized, they have to lay hands on you, you have to wait upon God. This time around, there was no baptism. He was just speaking, and the Holy Spirit poured upon them. Because these people were already fertile. They were ready to receive the Holy Spirit. If you prepare yourself and you say, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I drink the blood of Jesus. When you do that, the blood, we identify your own blood. And there will be no obstruction. Do you know why sometimes, Vicar will say, stretch your hand. Just emphasize, begin to see the blood of Jesus pouring on your hand. And then drink the blood. You see sometimes, you see some reactions. If there are demons inside, you see the reactions. Demons screaming. Because something strange 
is coming in to displace them. Christianity is the life of God's kingdom. There is power in the blood. There is power in the blood. Some of us, our divine encounter book is our pillow. We use the book like talisman. You know talisman? When you tie, <laughs> when you are given a ring, if you suspect any danger, wear it and it will work for you. Some of us, we use divine encounter material, divine encounter book like talisman, like sham. What you hold, you know, Vika will always tell us, we don't just give you miracles. We give you the word of God and miracles follow. Because he knows that when the miracles come and the miracles did not see the life of the owner of the miracle in you, the miracles could go back. Except by just God's own grace. That God just wants to do something out of his own mercy. Is somebody following me? That is why you need to have a relationship. So that when you pick the book, when you pick materials that are blessed, before you open your mouth, miracles will be happening. Some of us have not received our miracles because even though we are saying amen, the amen does not match our blood. It is a guguru that is in the blood. Our veins are not the blood of Jesus. When you see some people sweating, it's not because of good food. It is a guguru that is making them to sweat. Local gene. How do you, when they say, drink the blood of Jesus, and what is flowing in you is very hot. And you want to put the blood of Jesus inside. Will it mash? You can hide to drink it, but Ogogoro will not hide you. If you look at the people uh, at the corner of the eye like, like this, the skin will be flaky. I'm not saying anybody that has flaky <laughs> is drinking alcohol. That's not what I'm saying. But you see their skin? Their skin is not firm. They'll be having a omomo in their stomach, in their tummy. Omomo is there. Or mama that they will never give birth to. Because it is fat that is accumulated there, not a child. There is power in the blood. God does not do mistakes. He never makes mistakes. If it is not working, it is because there is something wrong. Not with God, but with us. That is why we need to do our own check very well. Jesus... Paid the price. And he made provision for us. So that whenever we see the works of the devil, we destroy them. If they overcame Satan by the blood of the lamb, you too will overcome. Say amen. amen. But for us to overcome, we must make sure that we are recognized. That blood is in us. When the seven sons of Sceva invoke the name of Jesus and said by the Jesus in that name that Paul preached we command you come out and the demons scan them your spiritual scan run it through them and discover that the blood was not in them something bad happened to them they were beaten up let us Reconsider our ways. We can't be suffering in the midst of this great provision. If you have a, a shrine, the blood of Jesus will not work. But if you are faithful, you call on the blood today, God will answer you. If God does not answer you, it means you, the time has not come. Because God, he makes all things beautiful in his own time, not in our time. And Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, there is time for everything. There is a time of peace, there is a time of war. 
Maybe when you are calling him, it's when God wants you to wake up and fight. Peace may not come that time because it's a time of war. If you are here and you are waiting upon this God, the blood is there for you. If the powers of darkness come around to oppress you, call the blood of Jesus. I remember someone who confessed. She said she became a serpent uh, in the house of a Christian sister. And in the night, she wanted to do evil. She now became a serpent, big serpent in the night. And she said, when the sister woke up, Christian sister or Christian sister, and mentioned the name of Jesus, mentioned the blood of Jesus, she said, something bad happened to her. That if they had used a knife on her, she would have died. Somebody who was in the kingdom of darkness making that confession. Some of us, if an, one elderly woman or elderly man tells us, or one uncle in the village tells us that, eh, this year I'm going to deal with you. Do you know that that will become the reason for some people to fast in a whole year? You that has access, you have access to the blood of Jesus. Somebody who does not have access to the blood, the most powerful blood, the most powerful covenant, says you will see and you are afraid. Afraid of what? What are you afraid of? Remember one Friday, a few years ago, we came from Friday fasting, my seat there, I checked the seat, I saw shams carry uh, with coin, they tie red cloths, they put it there, and they put it in a cellophane, in my seat. I picked it, I was angry. I put it in my pocket. So when I was leading prayers, I remembered. And I brought it out. I said, look at something somebody put in my seat. If you are here, go and tell the Babalawo that I put it in my pocket. When I got to my house, I dropped it on top of my table. I didn't pray. Because I believe that so long as the heavens remain, and I remain in Christ, no power can harm me. God, gone are the days I used when I was small in primary school. I put shams in my body, but when I came to know Christ, and I knew that the power in Christ is more than Odeshi. When a former classmate shoots me in Tagba, you know in Tagba, spiritual arrow, we shook hands. I just left my hands. We shook hands, and from that moment, my palms started scratching me. 2005. 2005. I just left secondary school. If my palms were scratching me. So I was telling my mother and my brother that. I didn't touch any. They said, is it because of the melon you broke? You were breaking melon. I said, have I not broken melons before? Yeah. So it went on my legs. Like uh, measles. They were coming out of my palms. Red. You could see blood gathering there. Instantly, I'm talking about instantly. I just slept. I was so uncomfortable, so small sleep just caught me. And I heard God spoke to me, said, Put salt in water and rub it in your body. So I got up, I took salt, I put it in water, rub it. In. That was the end. I did not visit. This is a testimony. Don't bow down to the powers that are supposed to bow before you. The blood of Jesus is more than enough. That was 2005. 2005. 2005. I did not visit any hospital. They did not remove. When I saw this former classmate, I saw him. I was looking at him. I was not blinking my eyes. I was looking at him. I was not blinking my eyes. He said, how are you? I was looking at him, looking at him. I sent a message to him. And then I turned back. I went away. I didn't answer him a word. I didn't say anything. There is power in the blood. If you live a good life with God, no power can harm you. If a child of God dies or anything happens, it's because God permits it. For he will give his angels in charge over you. And with their hands they will bear you. Lest you strike your feet against his own. Be on your feet.
You see me wearing my mask? Eh? You see me wearing my face mask? It's not because I'm afraid of coronavirus. Number one, the fact that you have faith does not mean that you suspend your brain. We must use our wisdom. And also because of our government. But it's not because I'm afraid of corona. If corona comes, I will kill it. If the blood of Jesus is in you, it will die. But that does not mean you shouldn't protect yourself. That is what I'm saying. The blood of Jesus is there. Do what is right. Do everything. The Bible says, and having done all to stand, you have to do all, and then you will stand. Lift up your hands to God. Lord, these are your people. The people you die for. Your blood is very much available. If God be for us, who can be against us? For the one that is in us is greater than the coronavirus in the world. The one that is in us is greater than that juju in your village. May the power of the Lord be released upon your life. Amen. The same way the blood of Jesus delivered us from sin. May that blood save you from all sickness. If you are not in Christ, may the blood of Christ, as it is written, when the Son of Man is lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. If you are not in Christ, may the blood of Jesus draw you by grace. If you are in Christ already, may the blood of Jesus threaten your mortal bodies. Amen. Father Lord, thank you for your word. May your word not be used against us on the last day. But may we make use of the word. And by the strength and the efficacy of your word, run this race till we see you on the last day. Amen. We will never be oppressed by the elemental powers of this world. Thank you for the provision of the blood. Jesus' name we pray. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at hosannadavid at or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.